So now what we got to start doing is adding the controls. So let's start off with moving the paddle. And for the paddle, how it's, the way it's going to move is just using your mouse. So we're going to get the mouse X position and then center the paddle at the mouse's X, but also making sure that the paddle always stays on the screen. So the way we can control that is going to be in here. We're basically going to, so before this for loop, let's add some space. And we'll say if pi game, or no, yeah, if pi game dot mouse dot get position zero. So zero is going to be the x. If we put in one, it would be the y, but we need the x for this. Um, minus player dot width divided by two is less than zero. We're going to set the player x to zero. And then elif pi game dot mouse dot get position. Let's copy that, paste it. And then we'll say plus player width divided by two is greater than the screen width. We're going to say player x is going to equal the screen width minus player dot width. Fantastic. And then so what these two if statements are doing is if the like if the mouse is too far to the left, the player x is just going to start. It's going to go to the like to go to zero, and then if it's too far to the right, it'll stop at the right side at the end of the screen. And then if the screen is actually on the window, the player x is going to be centered around where the x position of the mouse is. So pi game, so at player x is going to equal pi game dot mouse dot get position zero and then minus player dot width divided by two. So the two the two slashes right here are just going to give us a clean integer value. And so I think that should be it. Let's run it and see what happens. So yeah, I mean, so now we're moving our mouse and the paddle is moving alongside us. So that's looking good. If I, you see, so like right here is the sensor of the paddle. As soon as I go past it, the paddle stops moving. And if I go too far to the left, same thing, it just stops moving. So yeah, there's that. Next, what we should do is um, what should we work on next? We've got the player moving. Let's work on the the ball movement. And, all right, let's see. So for the ball movement, well, I mean, we already have this move function, so I guess what we can do is we can just say ball dot move. Now, so we gave it so in our initialization function for the ball, we said the x velocity is zero and the y velocity is five. So what's going to happen is as soon as we press run, the ball is just going to start moving down. Let's see if that's the case. Yeah, so it immediately just jumps down. So I guess let's just change that to one for now and kind of see what happens. Let's set, let's set the y velocity to one and then the x velocity to one and see what happens. So it's like slowly moving down, right? And so we've got the ball moving, but now what we need it to do is actually bounce off the paddle. So what we can do is maybe not the most efficient thing, but the way I'm going to do it is we're going to go inside this while loop, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to loop. Actually, no, we're not going to loop. We're just going to give it just a couple of if statements. So if the ball dot x is greater than the paddle, or greater than or equal to the paddle, the player 
dot x and the ball dot x is less than or equal to the player dot x we don't have that in there we'll just say okay let's add that real quick actually so paddle we just copy these two lines self dot x x and self dot y y they just kind of come in handy i like having them around we'll add that to the ball and we'll add that to the paddle perfect um so yeah, let's go right here if the, if the ball dot x is less than or equal to the player dot x x then we'll check for the y if actually here so we'll put this in parentheses and then we're going to say or the ball dot xx is greater than or equal to the player dot x and the ball dot xx is less than or equal to the player dot xx i guess we can put that in parentheses as well hmm Perfect. And now, so we reach basically what this does is it checks to see if the ball is between the beginning and the end of the paddle. And then we're also going to make sure that the Y is actually colliding with the Y or the Y of the ball. It's like the Y position of the ball is colliding with the Y positioning of the paddle. And then if we ever see that that's the case, we're going to multiply the Y velocity by negative one, causing it to go in the opposite direction. So if the ball dot y is, hmm, how should we do this? Let's check the bottom of the ball. So if ball dot y y, which is the y position plus the height, is greater than or equal to the player dot y and the ball dot y y is less than or equal to the player dot y y then we're going to say ball dot y velocity times equals negative one so now let's see what happens if we get there it doesn't work right, so i figured out why the collisions weren't being detected properly so basically the whole ball dot xx and player dot xx and dot yy all that kind of stuff wasn't being updated so like whenever the ball was moving or the paddle or the player was moving um the x's and the y's were getting updated but the ball dot xx and ball dot yy and all that wasn't and so that's why it wasn't like detecting the collision so what i went and did is i changed all of those to where Instead of saying every time I had ball.xx or player.xx, I just took off the extra x and then added, um, like right here, for example, player.width, and then here plus ball.width, and then like in the, so I just kind of messed with these two lines. So, what you want to do is you want to kind of just copy down these two if statements. Um, you know, like highlight them. Just make sure they match and then you should get a proper collision. And then at the very end of that, you're just going to say ball.y velocity times equals negative one, which is going to kind of cause it to bounce off. And so now when we run it like this, and the ball comes down, as soon as it hits the paddle, it's going to bounce back up. Now what you can see is that it bounces off the screen. So to fix that, we're going to go into a separate if statement we're going to say if the ball dot x plus the ball dot width is greater than or equal to the screen width, ball dot x velocity times equals negative one. And we're also going to have if ball dot x is less than zero we are going to do the same thing ball dot x velocity times equals negative one so now when it hits either of the edges it's going to bounce in the opposite direction and then what we can also do is if it hits the top of the screen so if ball dot y is less than is less than or equal to zero 
we'll say ball dot y velocity times equals negative one. So now when we run this, it's not going to collide with the bricks just yet, but it's going to bounce off the sides of the screens. When it goes up to the top, it's going to bounce off the top, go over to the left edge, bounce off of there, and come back down to the paddle.